مرحبا واهلا وسهلا فيكم هوب يو اول ويل اند هافينغ وندرفول داي ان ذس سيشن اي ويل جيف يو 10 تيبس هاو تو ميمورايز ووردز اند فوكابولري ان لافنتان ارابيك بيفور ستارتينغ توداي سيشن اي لايك تو هايلايت اند ليت يو نو ذا اي هاف ببلش ماي سكند بوك اند ات از بيولي بيز اون اكتيفيتي اند براكتس سو ذا بوك هاز ابروكسيمتلي 300 بيجز اند ذا انتاير بوك is all activities and the book starts from scratch helping you how to pronounce and learn some of these alphabet and for you to write it and then gradually builds that up to more complicated and advanced grammar check that out if you're interested in practicing and testing your levantine arabic but now let's come back to our main topic and in this session i'll be sharing with you 10 tips how to memorize new vocabulary in levantine arabic Let's start. Yeah. My first and foremost tip would be make smart choices. What do I mean by that? Uh, you don't need to memorize every single vocabulary that you come across in a course with a teacher or when you're learning a book. Instead of that, try to focus on the vocabulary that are more relevant to your short-term goal use. For example, if you're trying to prepare for an exam, then I would focus on the vocabulary that are related to that exam. And instead of looking at other vocabulary that might not be out of your interest. For example, if you're trying to work uh, in the media industry, then I would definitely focus on the vocabulary are related in media and journalism. However, if you're trying to travel to the Middle East, then I'll focus on the vocabulary that will be more relevant to your journey. For example, vocabulary and words are related to directions, food, hotels and transportation. To help you and ease your journey and have a wonderful time, and instead of relying on a tour guide or a guidebook which is out of date. My second tip is try to look up the word twice. First, use a bilingual dictionary, try to look up the word and try to get the general meaning or the idea behind this vocabulary. Then try, maybe down the line, try to look up the word in an Arabic dictionary. The Arabic dictionary will give you a more specific definition and meaning and use you for this vocabulary. And perhaps if there are certain grammatical cases are related to this then you will come across and it will show you how to use the word in addition to other meanings that you might not be aware of it. so in a way that widens your horizon one of the most interesting topics with arabic is something called morphology morphology is how words and vocabulary are linked together so when you use an arabic dictionary it will discuss other formation of the same word very much like the english like to write writing writers written and wrote however in arabic is more advanced than that and i'm sure if you're watching the verb conjugation you will see that i give you a quite a variety of derivatives this is what i mean by morphology my third tip for you on how to memorize a new word or new vocabulary is to work on your pronunciation you could use an online dictionary that has a pronunciation feature when it comes to looking up the word and especially the word stress. Sometimes I would pronounce a word and then some of you would ask, oh, did you put the stress on this part? So it's really important when it comes to learning your new vocabulary is to know where the word stress is. This would help you a lot. There are lots of online platforms that do offer this feature, but YouTube has the most and the most diverse. For example, you're here, you're learning from my pronunciation. And some of you might like it and some of you may not. However, there are more options for you to choose from. There are lots of other platforms like uh, Quizlet, Anki, and perhaps try to use the help of a friend to help you to write it and to help you to pronounce it. I would definitely recommend if some of you have any other suggestions for certain platforms, you could leave them in the comment section below so everybody can benefit uh, from learning Arabic and equally you could all support each other to practice learning Arabic. My fourth tip for you, make it a habit. In order to increase your vocabulary, try to use a magazine. Perhaps pick a magazine of your choice, look at the pictures, pick a picture and try to label the objects inside this picture. And obviously I mean here you need to write the Arabic words. Let's say hypothetically, if the page that you chose is scattered with other vocabulary, what you could do, you could use your smartphone, you could use a photocopier, you could use a scanner. And I think these days everybody uses a smartphone you could take some photos, print them, and then label them and leave them around the house. And what do I mean by leaving them around the house? For example, maybe around the kitchen, on a cupboard, on a fridge. You could leave it there 
for a week, or leave it at places that you're more likely to visit, for example, your desk in front of your computer. So the idea, the more you look at these new vocabulary, the more you memorize. One of the things that I always recommend I to and tell my students to use are sticky notes. They're really easy for you to write the new words on a sticky note and scatter them around the house. It will take you five seconds to put them around the house and it will take you five seconds to take them. But most importantly, try to be systematic. For example, for the first week, try to start with five words. Five words, scatter them around the house and try to practice them. The entire week, just try to practice five words. Then gradually increase that amount. And then on the third week, try to memorize the first and the second. This would help you a lot. The other good part of this is you could test yourself or can ask a family member or somebody else so they could help you to and test you with these new vocabulary with pictures or without pictures. My fifth tip is something personal to me. I do speak a number of other languages and I use this tip myself. First, before buying a dictionary, I try to make myself a glossary. What do I do? I pick up a notebook, 200 pages, and try to label them A to Z, alphabetically organized, and write the vocabulary down. One of the things that you will encounter is remembering the vocabulary. Making a glossary, which is alphabetically organized, it's not only you'll be able to count the amount of vocabulary you have, but you can target the vocabulary alphabetically. So all the vocabulary under B, like bait, you could target them and memorize them easier. This works for me a lot, and I do use it. One of the things that helps me, I would take my glossary with me all the time. If I'm walking down the road, if I see a, a billboard or an advertisement, uh, there are certain words on, what I do, I write these new vocabulary into my glossary, or if I'm reading a book or a magazine that I'm flickering through, I try to write it down. You could as well use the help and the aid of your teacher and friends to repeat them every day. So if we summarize our fifth tip is basically you make your own learning environment and you have special memories with. For example, when you're reading a book, you've got a magazine, you're walking down the road. So all of that is a personal experience. And when you write it down, that helps a lot. Or for example, if you have enrolled in a course and you come across certain vocabulary and you write them down, that would help you a lot to write them down and make your own glossary instead of buying one. My sixth tip is practical use. When you try to learn new vocabulary and phrases, try to make at least three sentences for each word. If you have a dictionary, most dictionaries, they do have an example for the certain word or for the word that you're trying to memorize. Try to look at it, try to study it, try to understand the grammatical cases behind it. But most importantly, try to make two sentences of your own, an experiment. Here, you could ask a friend, or ask a teacher whether the sentences you wrote are appropriate or correct or not. And if not, don't let this put you down because part of the learning process is to make mistakes and never be shy of making mistakes. Always be proud of your learning and make mistakes because how would you learn if you don't make mistakes? But if you don't make mistakes, then that's even more amazing and continue your learning. My seventh tip, try to make a picture dictionary. What do I mean by that? Uh, this is very much related to the previous one. However, with this one, you could create a picture dictionary, especially for those who are visual learners, meaning they could uh, memorize vocabulary by looking at the images or the action associated to a certain word. Or for example, there are certain words in English, they do correlate in a way to the Arabic, then that as well helps you to create an anchor point for you to memorize the words. You can have a look at through magazines and try to look for pictures of objects or actions related to the vocabulary or the words that you wish to memorize. Try to pick pictures that do represent these verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, not only nouns. What do I mean? For example, if somebody's running, then pick or cut out a picture showing a person who's running. So always that would help you looking at the picture to remind you of the verb to run. And instead of just putting a pair for the word pair, which is ijaz in Arabic. And equally for the adjectives, if you've got two adjectives, one is big, one is small, then it would help you to understand that big is kbir and small is sghir. Sometimes like in English, I do have some students say, oh, sghir is small. So both start with S and in a way for some people that helps. So if that helps you, do the same. My eighth tip for you, try to watch drama 
or easy songs. I do like sports and I cycle long distances and one thing that keeps me cycling is music and this is something keeps me motivated and listening to songs motivates me to go and cycle even more. Whereas sometimes if I don't listen to music, I don't really cycle very long and then I just come back home. Similarly, when it comes to learning, try to watch Levantine drama, but don't try to translate every single word. Just watch and, and enjoy. But perhaps sometimes you could focus on 10 words on a daily basis. Watch the drama and just pick up 10 words. And if there is a certain paragraph that you want to understand a little bit more, maybe focus on two to three minutes and try to translate the entire paragraph with a teacher or a friend. You could as well try to listen to songs to tune in your listening and try to imitate while listening to the song. One of the things that I've noticed uh, from the Middle East that lots of students when it comes to learning German or Spanish or Italian or English, they listen a lot to songs and try, they try to imitate and sing along. You could try to do the same thing by listening to music and there are lots because always students do ask what sort of songs do you recommend? I could recommend lots, but you might not like it. So what we'd recommend is look at YouTube, look at Spotify, look at other platforms and then pick one of these artists and pick one and try to always listen to it. But most importantly, try to imitate the vocabulary and if there's a certain word that you don't know, then ask somebody. So again, drama and songs can do help a lot for you to understand a lot of the words but most importantly drama when you're seeing the action and you're listening to the vocabulary that helps you a lot to memorize these vocabulary and words my ninth tip for you is understanding the grammatical cases one of the things that students always do make mistakes with is not paying attention to the prefixes and suffixes for the past and the present tense which they are in a way, the most important tenses in Arabic and especially in Levantine Arabic. As in Levantine Arabic, we don't have the subjunctive, we don't have the jussive, we don't have other grammatical cases that do exist in Fusha on modern standard Arabic. So memorizing the grammatical cases would definitely help you to understand the sentence formation. Alongside that, try to distinguish as well as conjugating the verbs, try to understand the conjugation of nouns and adjectives. This will most definitely help you to understand and memorize vocabulary when it comes to memorizing new vocabulary. So understanding the fundamentals behind these vocabulary and grammatical cases, it will definitely ease this learning process and for you to memorize your vocabulary and for you to be able to use it correctly within a sentence so people will understand something that which is formed uh, grammatically correct instead of just a couple of words are spoken after each other, which sometimes people might guess the general meaning, but it will be incorrect. So getting the tenses right, getting the prefixes and the suffixes, and most importantly, understanding what is a noun or what is an adjective and the grammatical cases related to that, it will definitely help you to form better sentences and memorize your vocabulary in a better and more efficient way. My 10th tip is called group learning. Group learning is divided to two things. The first thing is try to group the vocabulary within a certain category. For example, try to target the vocabulary which are around the house. And you could incorporate some of the previous tips by making some sticky notes and leaving them and scattering them around the house. For example, with a fork, with a glass, with a table, with a chair. So it helps you a lot if you target the vocabulary in a group. Similarly to work vocabulary, to travel vocabulary, that would help you a lot to memorize them. Or for example, if you work in the media field, then definitely try to focus on the vocabulary within the media field, like broadcast, presenter, anchor, news, etc. to help you to memorize it and make better use. So again, try to learn the vocabulary within a group. The second part uh, for this tip is in Arabic, we do have certain prepositions do come with certain verbs. In Arabic, similarly to English, some verbs are transitive and some verbs are intransitive, which in a way, I mean, between both languages, we could have a lot of similarities. But also bear in mind, we do have a lot of differences. For example, in English, you would say, I bought you a pen. In Arabic, you can't say that because otherwise it will mean 
I bought you as a person and we cannot do that and we cannot say that because it would be inappropriate to buy somebody. So here, when memorizing certain prepositions that do come with certain verbs, it will maximize your learning. But most importantly, you will help you to have better sentence formation. As in Arabic, as I said, we do have certain prepositions do come with certain verbs. What do I mean by that? We've got two examples for you here. Safarat bitayara. I flew by plane. So B in Arabic means by or in. And understanding that the verb to travel always comes with ba helps you to have a better sentence formation. But equally, it helps you to memorize the verb better and easier as it becomes more rhythmic. The second example, hasalat ala jaize. I got a prize. So hasal is to get or to obtain. This verb must come with a preposition ala, which means on. And prize is jaize. In English, you would say, I got a prize. But in Arabic, we say, I obtained on a prize. So the verb to obtain must come with a preposition ala. Memorizing on this way, it would definitely help you to memorize uh, the grammatical cases, to memorize and remember that with certain verbs, we do have certain prepositions. And most importantly, you will memorize and have a better sentence, which is correct. And nobody would say, sorry, what did you say? Which is something when it comes to learning, you don't really want to hear. Great guys, and with that, I'll end today's session. I really hope these 10 tips help you to memorize uh, vocabulary in a better and more efficient way. If you do have any other tips, then definitely leave them in the comment section below. And I will definitely try to make more videos to help you to practice and memorize your vocabulary. And if you like this session, found it helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and like the video as it helps the channel and definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel as you'll always be notified if a new video is out. Till next time, stay safe. Ma salame.